Welcome and thank you for standing by. At this time, all participants are in a listen-only mode. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording will be posted publicly. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. Now I'd like to turn the call over to your presenter for today, Vicki Mack, U.S. Census Bureau. Hello, everyone. My name is Vicki Mack and I'm a survey statistician in the outreach and education branch within the American Community Survey Office at the U.S. Census Bureau. And with me today is Bonin Wren, who goes by Ben, an IT specialist in the ACS Data Products Coordination Branch. I wanna thank you for attending today's webinar using the American Community Survey Summary File. Today's webinar is being recorded and the recording of this webinar along with the transcript will be posted on our website within a few weeks at the link on this slide. Also, if you would like to follow along with our webinar today, the slides are also posted at that link, and this link is also posted in the chat feature. During the webinar, if you have questions, you can post them in the Q&A section, and one of our colleagues will try their best to respond to you as quickly as possible. In addition, there are QR codes to various links to resources and information about the ACS and the ACS summary file located on many of the slides throughout the presentation. As for today's agenda, I'll provide a short overview of the American Community Survey or ACS and then discuss the summary file, including what it is, how it has changed, and how to access the data. Then I'll turn the presentation over to Ben, who will speak about the changes to the, to the table-based summary file format and discuss the resources, including SAS and Python examples. We'll conclude the webinar by covering some of the resources available on our website for learning more about the ACS. Now, the summary file users tend to be advanced users of the ACS. Therefore, we will not provide an in-depth overview of the ACS. However, if you want to learn more about the ACS, please view the recently recorded ACS webinars, including the introduction to the ACS webinar. The link to the recorded webinars is on the slide. Starting off with the basics, the American Community Survey is the nation's most current, reliable, and accessible data source for local statistics on critical planning topics such as age, children, veterans, commuting, education, income, and employment. The ACS samples about three and a half million addresses each year. These data are collected continuously throughout the year to produce annual social, economic, housing, and demographic estimates. The data collected through ACS are used to inform the distribution of more than $675 billion of federal government spending each year. The ACS is designed to produce critical information on small areas and small population groups previously collected every 10 years as part of the decennial census long form. With the introduction of the ACS, communities and businesses receive more current data and the census questionnaire sent to all residents every 10 years has been significantly shortened. The ACS provides three different data products, one-year estimates, one-year supplemental estimates, and five-year estimates. The 2021 product release dates are shown on the slide. The one-year data were released recently this month on the 15th. Regarding the geographies the ACS covers, the ACS provides data for more geographies on an annual basis than any other household survey. Looking at the image, you can see the hierarchy of geographies and how they relate to one another. The ACS's unique ability to report on a wide range of geographies is what gives it such a broad appeal. The content collected by the ACS can be grouped into four main types of characteristics, social, demographic, economic, and housing. Social characteristics include topics such as disability status, education, and language spoken at home. 
The American Community Survey also collects basic demographic characteristics such as age, sex, race, and Hispanic origin. Economic characteristics include such topics as commuting to work, employment status, and income. Housing characteristics include topics such as computer and internet use, housing costs, and vehicles available. These topics are used to produce more than 1,000 tables for local communities each year, and they power countless news stories every day. Now I'll provide a quick overview of the history of the summary file. So what is the ACS summary file? The summary file is basically a filing system for organizing large volumes of data. It is a set of files that contain all of the detailed tables for the ACS data releases for all geographies. The summary file is used by individuals or organizations who want to download the entire census data sets. That way, they don't have to go back and forth to the website for various tables. Many users are familiar with our detail tables, our subject tables, and data profiles. However, the subject tables and data profiles are not in the summary file as they were created from the detail tables in the summary file. Detailed tables provide access to the most detailed ACS data and cross-tabulations of ACS variables. ACS detailed tables begin with the letters B for base tables and C for collapse tables. The collapse tables cover the same topics as the base tables, but with fewer categories. The detail tables provide data at geographic areas down to the block group level. Detail tables are available through the ACS summary file, the Census Bureau application programming interface, and data.census.gov. This image on the slide shows a list of some of the detailed tables. Now, the summary file is a unique product that the Census Bureau provides as its commitment to releasing census data to all stakeholders in a fair and balanced method. The decennial census data products have been provided in summary files for several decades. The earliest record of use was for the 1960 census data. They were first used by the internal bureau staff to prepare tables and printed reports. Eventually, we also provided the data in tape reels for the state data centers who are census data dissemination partners. The summary files were later made available on CDs and DVDs to the public, which made the data so much more accessible and usable for so many more data users. The Census Bureau continued to use the data in summary files as input files to create other products like tables in print and PDF formats and on the internet dissemination tools like the previously used American Fact Finder and now the current tool, data.census.gov. Now, this is a quick summary of decades of using these files. This file, this format has influenced or frustrated many data users for many years. ACS data users have been working with the Census Bureau to improve formats over the last 20 years. We still, however, have a tabulation system that creates summary files for both the ACS and the 2020 decennial census. The formatting of the files has changed or evolved, and it will probably continue to evolve as we try to make the data more easily accessible to the public. Now, let's talk about the two different formats of the ACS summary files. There are currently two systems of the summary file. However, that will change with the release of the 2022 ACS data, where we'll have just one format. One format is called the sequence-based format, and the other is called the table-based format. The sequence-based format requires several steps for downloading the data. We now have a simpler method for downloading the summary file data, which is the table-based format. 
The table-based format is recommended or is the recommended format for the 2021 data release, and it will be the only format starting with the 2022 data release. However, users should first check if the data of interest are easily available for download on data.census.gov, which is the Census Bureau's main data dissemination platform. You would check data.census.gov if you're not looking to download an entire data set and just want one or several tables. To use the sequence-based summary file, users must locate three files, the, the summary file estimates, the margins of error, and geography files. These files contain a large number of cells, and they are stored in a series of files called sequences that contain only the estimates from the tables. Then the users must, after they find these files, they must follow several steps to merge the files in order to create the tables. The sequence-based format can be confusing for data users. Multiple sources of te technical documentation is needed to discover which file or sequence contains the table of interest. Then they must be combined to recreate the tables. So for ACS staff, each year they must split the data into 40,000 files, then prepare the same information in two different formats to accommodate the, re the requirements for the summary file and the application programming interface, which then loads that data into data.census.gov. Basically, in short, the issues with the ACS sequence-based summary file include a complex and confusing format, as well as extra work for both data users and the ACS staff. The Census Bureau provides a guide on the ACS summary file in the handbook titled, Using the American Community Survey Summary File, What Data Users Need to Know. We also provide instructions on how to access tables in the summary file using Excel and SAS. Keep in mind, most of the handbook is relevant for the sequence-based format. In the future, the summary file handbook will be updated since we now also have the table-based format. The table-based format streamlines the summary file production by delivering only one file. Instead of splitting the files by state and sequence number, the new format will be by table ID. That is, we will post a file for each table containing the estimates and margins of error for all available geographies. This will reduce the complexity of the ACS summary file from over 140,000 files to about 1,000 files. It will also improve ease of use for data users and lower the cost of creating, verifying, and supporting the ACS summary file compared to its sequence-based sequence -based format. The table-based format is much easier to work with than the sequence-based format because the estimates and margins of error for each table are combined into one file. Also, all geography identifiers and labels are combined into one file. So now data users will no longer need to search through multiple files for geography labels. Using the summary file complexity also makes documentation much easier to understand. So it saves time and resources for census staff. We also have examples of SAS and Python code and, and Excel instructions to help data users work with the data. The ACS webpage points to two external sites for accessing additional information on the table-based format. The GitHub Wiki page provides documentation about the table-based format, such as notes on data, geography, variable changes, example code, and other important general information about the ACS summary file. The GitHub repository page currently provides examples of SAS and Python code to help users get started. The GitHub page also allows users to manage their work 
and collaborate with others if they desire. To access the summary file, you must first access the ACS data page. Then you will select the summary file link. Once you select the summary file from the data page, you can choose to work with the table-based format provided from 2018 to 2021, or the sequence-based data available from 2005 to 2021. The links to the sequence space format is found on the right side of the page under related information and in the paragraph under the heading changes for the 2021 data release. Now I'll provide a demonstration on how to access the table based summary file and use Microsoft Excel to merge the geography labels with the tables. Then I'll turn the presentation over to Ben who will walk you through the recent table-based changes and demonstrate using SAS with the summary file data. The steps I'm about to share would be used with the data released in the table-based format for 2021 and later if nothing changes with the format. These steps are the same for all 2021 ACS data tables. These steps are very different from the steps used to combine files from the original sequence-based format. For information about the sequence-based format, you would visit the second link on the slide. So now, to work with the table-based format, you just need two files, the summary file data table and the geography, geography file. So let's get started. So now I'm showing the web page, the ACS summary file web page. The web page or the main summary file web page includes resources, links to data, and the Excel instructions at the bottom of the page that I am about to walk you through. From the main page, you can access the data and geography files in two different ways. One way is to scroll to the Getting Started page or tab and click on the link ACS Summary File Data. Another way is to select a year of interest. So if you're interested in 2018 data, you will select that tab and you will scroll down to your links to, the, to your data and the links to your geography files and, and table shelves. Going back to the Getting Started tab, I'm going to use the, the main data page link here, the ACS Summary File Data link. When I click on this link, I'm going to follow the steps to get to a table, B01001, Age and Sex, and that is for the year 2021. So I will scroll down to 2021. I will select the table-based format, and I will select data. Then I will select the one year data. That table B01001 is the very first table. When you click on the table, it will open as a text file. You will next save this file by right clicking using your mouse, finding the save as, and saving the document in an easy to locate a folder. At this point, I can also go back and select my geography file because I know I'm going to need that. So I scroll back to the documentation folder and I'm going to select the GEOS 2021 one year data, data text or text file. And I'm also going to save that folder. So I'm going to right click, select save as, and save that document in the same folder as the table. Now I'm going to open Excel.
In Excel, I'm going to open those files. So the first one is the data file. I'm going to go to File, and then I'm going to go to Open, and I'm Browse, and I'm going to go to my Documents. Oops. First, you have to download, sorry, you have to select all files. Open table B01001. And then the text wizard opens. Follow the steps of the text wizard. There are three steps you only need to. So I will select next. I will select the other delimiter. This is a tab based delimited file. So I'm going to insert my tab, um, not tab, pipe delimited. I'm going to insert my pipe or vertical bar. At this point, I can just select finish. And voila, we have our table full of data for every geography uh, for, uh, for table B01001. I next want to insert the geography labels. Because we have the GOID, we have the identif we have the locations. We do not have the geography labels for those GOIDs. So I want to select or right click insert, and now have an empty column. I'm going to add a little bit of space because I'm going to name this GO names or geography names. Okay, so now I need to do the same thing as far as opening the geography file in Excel that I did with this table. So I'm going to, so I'm going to go back to File, Open, Browse. Since I have all files open, I see my geography file and I'm going to select Open. Text Wizard opens. I'm going to select next. I'm going to enter my pipe delimiter and I'm going to select finish. At this point, I'm, go I'm going to go ahead and save this file as an Excel file. And I can close it now. So now I have my, my table ready to insert the geography labels. I'm going to insert my cursor into B2, and I'm going to insert a formula that that's in, that's included in the instructions that I showed you on the web on the main page. And it's a VLOOKUP uh, a VLOOKUP formula. It's telling me to look in the columns A, O, and A, P to find the geography labels that match this GOID. I select enter, it should enter the geography. So the first geography is the United States. And then I want to flash fill that geography label all the way down the table. So there's a little green square at the bottom right corner. I'm going to double click on that little green square. I have a giant cursor here. Because of this mouse size, there it is. I can hardly see. So now I have flash filled the geography labels into the column V. And these are the geog all geographies. So I'm done. Voila, the table's done. Next, I'm going to turn this over to Ben to continue his presentation. Hi, this is Ben. Good afternoon. Um, before we go over the SAS examples, I would like to introduce the latest change 
uh, made to this year's summary file supporting documents. There is no change to the data file. However, as you may already know, the table-based data file only contains variable name in the form of table ID, underscore, letter E for estimate, or M for MOE, followed by its uh, line number. It is necessary to use the table shell file to provide proper line labels. The table shell file contains line label for every detailed table, and each label has a unique ID, identified by the variable name unique underscore ID. This ID is composed of table ID, underscore, and the line number. With little change to the data file var names, one can merge the statistics with line labels using the unique ID. However, this year, to enhance the table shell document, we added hierarchy, line type, and universe columns. Now we have one file for one-year shells and one file for five-year shells. They're saved as text file pipe delimited, UTF-8 encoded. The old Excel versions are still available on data.census.gov. The current table-based summary file groups all geography of a table into a single data file. Each line of data is uniquely identified by its geography identifier, geo underscore ID. It is necessary to use the geo file to properly label the geo IDs. And this year we have phased out the variable data ID from the geo file and replaced it with geo underscore ID. Now the same variable is present in both data file and geo file. We have also added tiger shape IDs and the new, as a new column. And just like the table shell, the geo file is now saved as a text file, which is pipe delimited and UTF-8 encoded. The latest changes can be found on the GitHub webpage under the change log section. Next slide, please. We have here a simple SAS program to demonstrate how to use geo file to select estimates from a specific geography. In this example one SAS program, we choose to work with table B01001, the same table. And uh, we want to select all geographies and sub geographies from the state of California. So after downloading the data file for table B01001 and the geo file, we use proc import in this case to read in the file since both the data and geo files are pipe delimited. And by default, PROC import will automatically scan the first 20 rows of data to determine the appropriate data type and length for the variables. We use guessing rows statement here to specify a larger number to avoid truncation of the geo ID or label variable. So the data and geography information are then merged by the variable geo underscore ID in the PROC SQL step. After merging, we use variable STUSAB, which is the state code variable from the geo file to specify only keeping data from the state of California in the where statement. So the output SAS data set would look like this. As one can see, it not only contains data from the state of California and all of its, all of its sub geographies. Started with state level, followed by metropolitan area, county level, and city level, etc. There is also a Python example which performs the same task posted on the GitHub webpage. And you're welcome to download the programs and try it out. So this concludes the simple SAS example. Thank you, and I will turn this over back to Vicky. Okay, thank you, Ben. I want to inform you that there's a group specifically for users of American Community Survey data, known simply as the ACS Data Users Group. The 
purpose of the ACS Data Users Group is to improve understanding of the value and utility of ACS data, as well as promote information sharing among data users about key ACS data issues and applications. The ACS Data Users Group includes a users group website and online community with over 4,000 members. The, the website contains information such as previous conference presentations and archived webinars. This online community is a site where members can share messages, materials, and announcements related to ACS. And ACS Census Bureau staff are also members and share program updates here. We also host ACS data users conferences, typically every two years, in order to provide an opportunity for data users and Census Bureau staff to showcase their work and exchange information about their experiences using ACS data. The most recent conference was held in May of this year, of last year, sorry. The conferences are open to the public and information is posted in advance on the Data Users Group website. Membership is free and open to all interested ACS data users. To learn more, go to acsdatacommunity.prb.org, listed at the bottom of the screen. In closing, I encourage you to connect with us directly. If you have questions, you can reach us at the phone numbers shown here. You can sign up for and manage alerts on the ACS via Gov Delivery. Also add yourself to Gov Delivery if you want the slides from this presentation or any other presentations we provide. Gov Delivery will send out a broadcast when materials are available. ACS also has an email to help support data users who ha may have questions. It's acso.users.support at census.gov. You can visit our website or connect on the various social media platforms using the hashtag ACS data. And one last thing, if you're using ACS data, make sure to source the Census Bureau surveys as to where you receive the data. It helps people know the information they're using is powered by the American Community Survey. And with that, I wanna thank all of you for joining us on this webinar today. Again, a recording of today's webinar, along with the slides and the transcript, will be posted online shortly. This concludes today's webinar. Thank you for your participation. You may disconnect at this time.